Not one, not two, but three European finals have been made by Italian teams. And today, we are rebuilding one of those squads Inter in today's rebuild. And we will go ahead and consider everything that has happened this season for Inter through an end of season rebuild and try to fix everything that might have gone wrong this season. If you consider the fact that the Serie A has new champions in Napoli who are obviously extremely strong and have some of the most desired players in world football going from defense with Kim Min Jae into midfield with Kvarash Kelia and the forward position with Ozymen, it is a surprise that they were not part of any of these three finals. But it was Inter, it was AS Roma in the Europa League and it was Fiorentina in the Conference League. The rise of the Serie Serie A is coming in and it's lovely to see because the Serie A is an amazing league that I personally have a lot of sympathy for. So today, let's do this rebuild with Inter. Let's talk about all the things that have gone right and all the things that have gone wrong and all the things that will be happening in this summer transfer window. Oh, and of course, guys, the ultimate goal that we're setting ourselves for this rebuild is Serie A the Coppa Italia, and of course, the Champions League all in one season. So let's start off with the obvious, and that is the Champions League final that just passed. As I'm recording this, the Champions League final against uh, Manchester City has just happened. And it, honestly, it's a shame to see Inter go out because in the game itself, they actually had a higher XG than Manchester City. But things didn't work out for this team. And if you look at this squad, you're probably thinking like, how did this team make it to the Champions League final? Because before this season started, if you asked anyone, no one would have told you that they expect Inter out of all the Italian teams to be the one getting to the Champions League final. Most people were talking about Napoli all the time. And I have to say, this story, the story of Acerbi, who is a player who's only on loan over here, is incredible. This man had cancer twice and beat it and yesterday against Haaland actually had a good performance as well. Much respect to him, an incredible story for him, but he's only on loan. And then if you look on the bench, you see the likes of Lukaku. And of course, the situation with Lukaku, there's a lot of things to consider here. Lukaku is only loaned from Chelsea. And as things stand, the uh, Inter owner, the president says, Romelu loves Inter, that's very clear. He's a great guy, but he's under contract at Chelsea. We have to wait and speak to Chelsea to make Lukaku's future clear. And obviously, guys, there will be big question marks around a lot of players in this squad. When it comes to just contracts running out, there's a mental number of players that will be gone from this team as of recording today. Because if you look at this squad right here, Dzeko, contract running out. Going down the list, Acerbi going back to Lazio from his loan at Inter. Going down to the bench, Lukaku will be leaving the squad. As things stand, we don't know. But on paper, he has to go back to Chelsea and Chelsea actually need a striker. Is there going to be another chance for Lukaku to play at Chelsea? I don't know, maybe. And then going down the list, I have seen the transfer rumors surrounding Korea. A couple of teams are apparently interested in signing him. The likes of De Frey, his contract is running out. He's probably going to be leaving the squad. And uh, even though saying that there might be talks of him possibly staying, I have seen some rumors, including this one right here from Ekrem Konru says Inter Milan will hold new talks with Stefan de Frey's agent to extend this contract. There are clubs interested in the Dutch defender from Spain and Turkey. So possibly Acerbi going back to Lazio could open up a door for de Frey to stay. So we might extend this contract, but I'm not too sure about that one. Going down the list even more, Handanovic is retiring, I believe. You have the likes of Skriniar, who is openly come out and said that he's going to be joining PSG. And then you go down the list even more and just see players like Dalbert, whose contracts are just running out and are not going to be extended. And then you also have a bunch of players in this Inter squad that are loaned out. I mean, if you look at the ratings here, we go down the list. Obviously, Acerbi and Lukaku loaned in, but then you also have Sensi, who is at Monza, a player that possibly could do well, but not necessarily a player that will carry you into another Champions League final. Then going down the list, you have the likes of Lazaro, Bellanova, Aslani, even though Aslani is actually 
uh, a loaned in. You got to keep in mind that as well with Belanova as well. But then Radu is loaned out. Colidio is loaned out. Agume is out there. Uh, we have Satriano. So you can just clearly tell the club could be a mess in this summer transfer window. And I will try to make it quite clear as to how things could potentially look with Inter. So let me go ahead and do a couple of transfers and then we will start the rebuilds. And by transfers, I actually mean letting go players that are probably really going and leaving the squad. Before I actually show you guys the players that have left and how the squad looks, I want to bring in a player that apparently today the news has come out is going to be joining Inter. We're talking about Theo Sander, who was part of of Alborg, who got relegated today. He's a very talented goalkeeper still, only like 17, 18 years old, and he has now signed with Inter, or at least they are trying to sign him up. So, here he is in that Inter kit. Onana has proven to be absolutely incredible with his feet at Inter. One of the goalkeepers that probably a lot of the clubs out there are now looking at thinking, why did we not get him when he was at Ajax and he got basically pushed out of the club? Onana is incredible. This guy has done so well. I mean, his passing, his distribution is unreal. I, I've seen Pep Guardiola talk about it and he said, if you have a goalkeeper like Onana, it changes the game. So yeah, I really like him. Obviously, Sander is a very young goalkeeper, 62 rated in FIFA 23. I believe in the next game, he will probably be a lot higher rated. But guys, this is the squad that we have right now. So I I guess I will follow the news, even though Ekrem Konur is not necessarily the most reliable source. I guess we can say De Frey could potentially extend this contract. Now, Bastoni, I believe, will be very hard to keep a hold of because he has been very good. He's still young, very promising. And if you play in a Champions League final, it's like you're putting your, yourself into a really good position for managers to go window shopping and basically look at players that are playing at the highest level and be like, yep, I want that guy. And Bastoni could be someone that with this new style of football with defenders playing incredibly offensive lately, he could be the next guy that people are interested in. So Bastoni, I can see him going to like Manchester City and fitting into their system straight away. Like, honestly, I do. So yeah, I will keep him for now. I will. But I do believe there is a move in him very, very soon. And the same goes for Barella. He is absolute quality. But then going into the squad, Darmian next season will be 33 years old. We probably will have to bring in a new center back right there. De Frey, even if he stays, will be 31 years old at the start of the next season. Dumfries and Di Marco, in my opinion, are incredible. Especially Di Marco is very underrated, in my opinion. He has done an exceptional job for this Inter team and really reinvented himself on that left wing back position slash left midfield. I really, really do like him. And he's only going to be 25 by the start of the next season. Chalonolu has also kind of reinvented himself, dropping a little bit deeper and becoming a playmaker that is just ahead of the defense, but obviously still very much capable of going ahead and scoring and assisting, especially, especially with set pieces. Brozovic has been in and out of the starting 11 many times this season, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know what the situation is going to be with him, but that midfield is incredibly strong. Now, Lautaro Martinez has a contract until 2026. A lot of big clubs in Europe right now, as we speak, are looking for a striker. But the question is, are they looking for a striker like Lautaro Martinez, who most of the time, in order to get the best out of him, you have to play him next to another striker. He has that typical thing about him the old school big man little man striker partnership has worked out really well with him with Lukaku with the likes of Jekko as well so you think you think that Martinez probably stays at the club so for that I think this is the uh first set of uh, a squad that we are going to be putting out there now obviously we need to find a new striker and that is going to be a tough thing to do but ideally it needs to be someone taller that can support Lautaro Martinez in what he does best. In my opinion, there is one transfer that just makes so much sense to the point where it makes too much sense. We're talking about the news that PSG and Inter are in competition to sign Marcus Turam. I think that would be perfect. Honestly, he's a free agent. Obviously, PSG could be signing him. 
But, guys, this move, I don't know if it's going to happen. I personally am hoping for that one right there. Inter... And he would fit in perfectly. I am aware that PSG want more French players in their squad. But if he wants to be a starting 11 player, if he wants to be a very important player that is not going to be replaced by someone else within one season, if he doesn't perform too well, which obviously could happen at PSG, I think Marcus Turam, this is your chance. Grab it. Join Inter. This would... It's just perfect. Like, honestly, guys, I don't think... There's a better transfer that Inter could make right now. And honestly, I'll, I'll tell you straight up. As I was thinking about the player to bring in into this team, I was obviously thinking of like taller players that would make sense right now in terms of a transfer. And then I thought, oh, Turam. And then I looked up, I looked up a few things. And all of a sudden, I see he's actually linked to Inter. So seems like... Your boy's not that bad at scouting and finding out the issues, so I'm very happy with this one. Now, obviously, PSG is probably more likely due to money, but uh, Turam, I think, yeah, this would be amazing. A great partnership that you could build up for years to come. Martinez is 24, Turam is 24, so they both be 25 by the beginning of the next season. And yeah, I think this is the one transfer Inter should make. Turam is very good in terms of physicality. He is six foot four tall. It just would be a match made in heaven. Since the center back situation at Inter is not necessarily ideal for the next season, considering the ins and outs of transfers, we need to talk about this man possibly being the best solution for this team. Konstantin Mavropanos, a leader, a player that has helped Stuttgart to not get relegated. They have gone past Hamburg in Germany and they avoided relegation. He is someone that teams like Antracht Frankfurt are interested in. But I am sure that if the Champions League finalist would come through and ask for you to join them, this would be the perfect transfer for Inter. I do believe he will cost them a little bit of money. I don't know how long his contract is actually going. I don't think he has too long of a contract left. But nonetheless, I think he would be perfect. I really, really do. Mavro Panos is someone that can do it all. He is very physical in his style of play. Six foot four tall, but also has high attacking work rate. On set pieces, he can be very, very strong as well. And I do believe that Inter have this... This thing about their defense with players like Dumfries even, a wing back who's actually six foot two and very physical and good in the air, set pieces are very important for a team like Inter. And if you have Chalanolu kicking them into the box on corner kicks, someone like Mavropanas alongside De Frey, Bastoni, Dumfries, the likes of Turam as well, that could be really, really good. And if you have a goalkeeper like Onana, who can chip balls and play long balls. Balls, big balls. Having players that can bring it down, that can shield off players, can be very important. Even in defense, Onana has that capability of chipping that one attacking uh, player, pushing him and pressing him. He can just chip that guy and find one of the center backs in one of the wider positions. So I think this would be perfect. Mavropanos just, again, makes too much sense. And I honestly do believe this team is now ready to go. So let's attack the season, see how things go, and then we will go for more, more transfers as we build through time here. Big, big balls. Well, this season in the Serie A, we obviously had to compete against some massive teams in Italy. But guys, it seems like we have won the cup. Yes, AC Milan, the bitter rivals, beaten in the final. And in the league, I'm seeing a lot of dubs. So is there a slight chance... No, there isn't. I thought we won the double, but it seems like we're far away from that, which is okay. We'll work towards that as we go on. As some of our players get older and we move them on as well, things will change. So Inter on 77 points, AS Roma winning the title with Mourinho. Apparently Mourinho and AS Roma are about to sign Evan Indica from Frankfurt. So watch out for that one. And uh, yeah. Great performance there. But in the Champions League, where did we fail? What was the, op or who was the opponent that kicked us out? Man City. <laughs> of course it had to be Man City. Of course. Hopefully, 
at the end of this video, we're actually playing against Manchester City. I would love that to finish off this video. And then look at this. Martinez 88, Turam 85, Barella 87, Chalanolo, I believe, on the same rating as at the start of the season. Brozovic 85, Mavropanos up to an 81, which I don't know if that's a lot of growth. I think he came in at 8, 7, no, what did he come in at? I think 78, that's okay. So Dumfries 82, De Frey 84, Bastoni 88, Di Marco on an 83 as well, which I like. But I have to admit, the bench is not necessarily looking too amazing. That is something we will have to deal with as we move forward as well. But after the first season transfers, look at that. 23 goals for Turam, but 15 assists. That could be him heading the ball on to Lazaro to run through and score. Hey, it is working. The big man, little man technique is working still for Lautaro, who manages to get 22 goal contributions. Varela and Chalanolu helping out in that attack. And now, as we go into our second season, in which we will be playing Champions League again, we need to make the right decisions. Some older players need to be moved on. Get the hell out of here. Starting off the rejuvenation of the squad in midfield, I am bringing in someone who has defensive, but also great offensive qualities, brings in that physical side into the squad as well, and is a very hard worker. It is Ibrahima Sangare. This man at PSV Eindhoven, I fully expect him to move this summer. I'm actually going to be very excited to see where he goes and obviously at PSV he has done a great job in the past years but now he comes in it lowers our overall rating in midfield Brozovic was 85 rated but like 31 years old so Sangare is here and he's here to stay having him as one of the taller players in midfield obviously the midfield position being the one where we aren't as tall Varela being 5'9", Chalanolo being 5'10". It's great to bring in Sangare right here, who is now 6'3", to allow these little ma magicians to do what they do best as he brings those balls down, does the interceptions, does the tackling, and carries the ball forward to these lads to do their bits. So, Sangare makes tons of sense to me. Now the question is, do I move on De Frey already? Because, obviously, his contract is running out technically this summer and there are only talks of him extending i guess it only makes sense that we do let him go after having used him just for one season just in case he stays we know what could happen let's move him on and bring in a new center back look we have seen many many players in the past play for multiple sides in italy and luis felipe has gone to real betis before that he used to play for lazio and now he's returning into this inter squad so i was looking into defenders and their stats in real life i was looking for someone who isn't as progressive with the ball but someone that is actually really good at staying back and just defending and luis felipe fit that profile perfectly and that would allow now, players like Mavropanos and Bastoni to get the best out of themselves. So, Luis Felipe welcomed De Frey, who could possibly not even be there at the in the end at the beginning of the new season. My God, can I speak? But anyways, um, yeah, the new defense is set up. Luis Felipe returns to Italy. And I think that could do really well. I really do. Yeah, I really, really do. This season hasn't gone according to plan. We are looking at Inter losing against AC Milan, their rivals in the cup final. And in the Champions League, getting beaten once again by a Premier League side, this time being Liverpool. But there's one good thing I can tell you about. And it's the fact that we didn't finish fourth. We finished third. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, let's go back in here and take a look at the squad. Martinez, Lautaro on a 90 now. To Ramon an 89. He's on fire. I definitely should work on his weak foot, though. Uh, we have Chalonolo on an 86. He's now 30 years old. Sangare has blown up in his rating. What the hell? 87. Barella, 89. Dumfries on an 83. He probably should have grown a lot more considering he was higher rated than Mavropanos at the beginning of the season. That is a bit of a disappointment. He's 28. Ooh, please, Dumfries. You have at least like three more good years in you. Felipe has come in, grown to an 84. Bastoni is the leader of this squad. Honestly, I would just want to give the captaincy to him or Barella. 
I'm going to give it to Bastoni. Don't care. Um, so then Di Marco in the left wing back position on an 85. And Onana is clearly becoming one of the best goalkeepers in the world. But I think the issue is that our bench is too weak. And that is going to be something we focus on as we go into the next season. In which I truly believe that this Inter team is going to do much better. As we go through this though. By the way guys. Let me know in the comments down below where do you think inter will finish next season do we actually believe that inter can be very strong the next year i do think there are a lot of challenges ahead of the squad that could actually cause it to do worse than this year not in terms of champions league i think that's going to be very hard to achieve to get to a champions league final again anyways but in terms of the Serie A, do we see them struggling let me know in the comments down below with all the outgoings and the rumors not necessarily looking too great so yeah let me know oh and of course stats wow 41 and 3 30 and 11 12 and 5 and 12 and 17 we have four players just absolutely ripping it up and i am loving it well lads as we speak there is one message that just came out from fabrizio romano and he's saying inter will continue talks with monza for carlo augusto next week He's a concrete target as a new left back. No issues on personal terms. Nottingham Forest also appreciate the Brazilian left back, but Inter are now ahead. Does that mean that Di Marco is leaving? So Carlos Augusto will be joining us, and I believe I should be seeing his stats. Why don't I see his stats? There he is. He comes in as a 79 rated player. Wow. I, honestly, I haven't heard of this guy, so I'm very impressed. 80 pace, 73 shooting. 78 passing good dribbling good defending good physicality only 25 years old and he potentially is going to be taking over that Di Marco position which kind of tells me that Di Marco is possibly leaving is that what's going to happen I haven't seen too many rumors about it if you guys know about it let me know in the comments down below but Carlos Augusto Welcome. I needed players to the bench, and you are very much welcome to the bench. Next up as the future Chalanolu, possibly, I am bringing in someone that can take set pieces, who's already doing it for Valencia. It is the main man, Andre Almeida. This is a youngster, a Portuguese one that I believe is going to be playing in the upcoming under 21 Euros. Let me know if you guys are going to be watching the under 21 Euros. I think they're happening starting like 26th of june if i'm not mistaken so yeah i'm excited about that i'll be watching in a couple of games to find some of the next hidden gems but this one comes in as an 81 rated centimeter just like sensi so we have great backups there augusto can help out in the wing back positions satriano can come in for the strikers agume can come in for sangare van Usten for the center back spot and then sander is still here on a 60 freaking seven but yeah, I want to go into the season with this team. I trust in them. So one Manchester team has been beaten and I wanted to play against them in the final. But we are beating Manchester City as things stand. Yes, we are. The treble is still on. There's still a chance. I need to win every single game in the league, though. We need to. Yes, it seems like we are pulling it off. Barcelona, I think the first game was a draw. The second game is a win. Champions League finalists, cup winners, and... Possibly, possibly Serie A title on the line. Yes, all the games have been won. Okay, guys, there is a chance. We have won the cup. We are in the Champions League final. Two trophies we can grab ourselves. But here's the moment of truth. Treble. Treble is on. Okay, so we can go ahead and pull this off. That one game against AC Milan might have decided everything. The direct battle between the two. We have pulled it off. With this squad right here, 92 on both strikers. Chalanolu 88, Barella 91, Sangare 88. Defensively, Luis Felipe and Mavropanos, along with Dumfries, the lowest rated ones. Bastoni on a 91 as the captain. Di Marco 88, Onana 89. I can see a potential rise for Onana's rating in the next FIFA for sure. And on the bench, we have quality players with Almeida also going up in his stats alongside the likes of Agume. So good things have come around to this Inter squad. And we have beaten Manchester City, which is obviously one of the things we wanted to pull off. But right here, Lautaro and Turam, this partnership has worked absolutely amazing. Di Marco, 14 goals and 8 assists from left wing back. 
Chalanolu and Barella have just continued doing what they've always been doing and Dumfries has been involved in four goals and one assist. This team, I love it. I really do. I cannot wait to play with this team against this PSG. No, sorry, against the Liverpool side. Where the hell did PSG come from? Liverpool coming in with Luis Diaz, Kakpo, Salah, Mikel Merino, Verratti, Kessie, okay. Mazraoui, Van Dijk, Tapsoba, Trent, Alisson. That is a good team, you know. It's going to be quite the battle. Interesting to see a completely different Liverpool midfield. Even the game sees that the Liverpool midfield needs changing. But guys, this is our squad and I believe in them. The treble is on. I've got to say, I, again, did not believe that this Inter team would make it to the Champions League final this year. But it's beautiful to see that Italian football is back on the map. I really like that. Conference League final, Europa League final, Champions League final... Now, given that none of these teams have won it, still, it's an achievement. And I really like seeing that for Italian football because back in the day, guys, before the Prem was this huge, the Italian league was massive. Like, it was genuinely massive. Teams like AC Milan would be winning trophies in Europe for fun. So, I think a lot of people don't remember that, especially people that are younger than my generation as well. It's really something that was impressive back in the day. So for me, I would love to see Inter and AC Milan and Juventus, all these teams become stronger again and compete with the likes of the Premier League sides in the future because we do want to keep football competitive. We don't want the same team winning every single trophy every single year. That's not what you want to see. You want to see a competitive side walking up to the final and knowing that they are not guaranteed to win that game. So, yeah, I really like that. And, uh, yeah, Inter, thank you for making that final interesting. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is happening here? Onana! Yes, buddy! And that's a good ball inside. Liverpool causing us trouble, but Onana won't let him pass them. Dangerous. Still. Still very dangerous. Liverpool... Just walking into my box and shooting once more. It is a showcase of that man's skill so far. No chance in the air. You're not beating me in the air. You're also not beating me with long shots. The defense needs to sit back as we do play this five at the back formation. When we are defending, it should be quite effective against this Liverpool side. Chalanolu. Great work. Lautaro. Di Marco. Down the left. Turam in the middle. Di Marco. It, what? How can Alisson just grab that out of the air like it was nothing? My biggest chance so far. Just completely wasted. Turam, Lautaro. Once more. Great run inside. The first half ends with Liverpool mostly dominating the chances. Salah making a run. Right there defending it. Lovely. I thought at first. What a mistake at the back. Oh, Marco Verratti scores the goal. That needs to be cleared much better. This is late into the game as well. I mean, by late, it's like, what, 61st? Yeah, I need to do so much better there. I need to clear it. I can't just play it straight into the middle. What a mistake. Moving it. Chalanolu waiting for the right moment to take the shot himself and give Turam a chance for... Yes, picking up the pieces. Tudam, 69th, we are back, baby, let's go. A huge moment for Inter. We need to use this left-hand side a little bit more. We are getting great runs from Chalanolu, who can now find Tudam once more. He strikes it on his left, but his left foot, I forgot to train it, it's still a three-star. Chalanolu set piece is important, very important. Tudam against Van Dijk, hits the crossbar. Mavropanos wins it. Alisson saves it. Ah, oh, mate. What a freaking game. It's still time, though. It's still time to get one more in. Cross whipped in. Turam in the center. Alisson, of course. Why not? Ooh, big steal. Lautaro. Lautaro. Turam. Yes. 88th minute. Big mistake at the back. 
Inter have done it! Unbelievable scenes. Look, I didn't want it to come down to an error at the back, but the pressing worked down to Chalanolu, Lotaro, and Turam. That is what caused this Liverpool team to fall apart. No chance for Alisson. He is a broken man as Turam scores his second with Lautaro assisting it. The moment we have been waiting for. Sadly, they couldn't do it yesterday, but they are doing it now. As you're watching this, actually, it's like, what, two days ago when the whole final happened? But anyways, guys... Bastoni gets to lift this trophy. I actually fully expect him to get a move. I'll be honest with you. He is too good of a forward playing uh, center back. And I believe he's left footed as well. And that is something that's really hard to find. There are only a couple of players that can do what he does, like the likes of Guardiola and such. But that is the end, guys. Inter have done it. And I've had a ton of fun seeing the rise of Serie A again. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.